Hello and welcome to A Tribe Called Cars. My name is Ben Griffin and today we are in Scotland. Yeah, that's right, Scotland. Near where they filmed the Aston Martin DB5 scene, actually. Although that's not really important. And why am I talking like this? The main thing is that I'm driving the new Volvo S60. This particular model is the T5R design, which means it's the petrol. Interestingly, this is one of the first Volvos, if not the first, to be offered without a diesel. So the electrification process is definitely happening. So what you have is a two litre petrol that is not especially nice to listen to, but it's got enough horsepower for zero to 62 of six and a half seconds. So it has got some beans. Yeah, it's plenty fast to be fair. Yep, no diesel fumes here. Just a 250 horsepower, two litre four cylinder petrol and an all wheel drive 390 horsepower T8 plug-in hybrid. Eco-minded, deep-pocketed speed seekers may be tempted by the Polestar version of the latter, which achieves 0 to 62 miles per hour in 4.4 seconds. A cheaper, less powerful T6 hybrid is on the cards. Now, being the R design means you get the sport suspension, so this car is firmer and more dynamic than any of its predecessors. And you can feel that because this thing is much firmer, the steering feels tighter and more responsive, particularly in dynamic mode. There's a weightiness to it that's really, really nice and it handles wonderfully. It feels very stable and very planted in the corners. This is hardly surprising because the Volvo S60 R Design Plus also benefits from stiffer springs, thicker anti-roll bars and a 12mm lower ride height. So you can leave your pipe and slippers at home. The S60 is the sixth Volvo in the current lineup and uses the same SPA scalable product architecture as its siblings, which has been designed with electrification in mind. Now we've been driving for three hours and I have to say that this thing has the sort of feel and balance that you get with a Jaguar. It's kind of firm and feels sporty, but at the same time it's not too offensive. It's not too firm that it makes driving on these kind of roads, which aren't always the best. Um, particularly unpleasant. I will say though if you hit a big pothole it makes a noise and you do feel it right through. You can feel the tautness of the chassis and the suspension and it's not especially pleasant but as a comfortable cruiser it is still very very good. It just happens to have a more exciting nature to it when you want it to. Now the gears in this thing are pretty decent. It's a little clunky when you're coming down the gears in the sportiest dynamic mode, which holds the revs for longest, but it's not especially unpleasant when it does so, and it holds the revs just long enough for you to make fast progress, and it reacts quick enough, but it's not like some cars where it's really noisy and annoying, and you almost want to take over and do the job for it. Shifts are provided by an 8-speed Asin Warner gearbox, in case you were wondering, and not your more usual ZF offering. The fit and finish in here is very much like all Volvos, the XC40, XC60, the XC90, the V90, the estate version. It's lovely. It really does feel solid. There's a few cheap plastics, but you get that in all cars, but they're, it's on the paddles in this particular car that are, where it feels a bit naff. But everything else is decent. It's solid, it's stable. It's incredibly quiet in here. It's very refined. As I've said before in my written reviews for Combu cars, Volvos kind of feel the most like a Tesla without being electrified, which is a really big compliment. This thing, when you're easing off the gas or at low speeds, it's so quiet. And there's a range of nice finishes for this car, but I think even in the black with the silver, okay, it's a little scratchy, but it looks nice. It looks like a premium car. And that's what you want in this particular sector. This is starting at 38,000. In fact, you can spend hours choosing between 14 exterior colours and 5 upholstery trims if you really want to. If not, know that the entry-level R Design Plus comes with navigation, LED headlights, two-zone climate control, front and rear parking sensors, hill start assist, heated front seats, 12.3-inch TFT driver's information display, and hands-free boot opening. And breathe. But it certainly feels as luxurious and as comfortable and the, the sensors navigation system Still a little bit fiddly, it takes two button presses to adjust the temperature, which I find annoying. But at least it's split into a fairly logical menu system and you can find stuff nicely. Navigation's not brilliant, I find it easier to use your phone for instance, but it's good enough for the job. The seats again, really supportive, 
feel nice, good enough to make you feel like this is a slightly sporty machine, but not so much that after three hours I felt uncomfortable. It, it really is a very good mile eating machine, this thing. I also have to say I like how it looks. The rear end on the older model was a little bit, uh, didn't, didn't quite do it for me, but with the 19 inch alloys and a few other sporty elements and the overall design, it, it just has more presence. It's a more pleasing car. And it's not so outlandish though that you would stand out too much among those who've gone for the German equivalent. But it does have a rather cool, stately, high quality, classy feel about it. And I, I really like that. I think these days Volvo has become the cool option in many ways. They still sell 600 odd thousand cars in a year. That was last year, but that compared with its rivals is, is quite a small amount. And actually they're, they're growing upwards in a market that grew smaller by about 7%. So I think people are happy to invest and pay for a product that actually is high quality, is well built, is good on safety. This got the five star end cap. It has all the emergency safety systems. It can sort of practically drive itself really rather well. I tested the old version and it was, it's great. It stays between the lines, it'll control speed, does all of that stuff. I also like the visibility. I like the fact that it's got the sunroof, but it hasn't eaten into the space at all. I mean, I've got the seat low because it makes it feel a bit more exciting, but being a six footer, I mean, I could wear most hats and it wouldn't get in the way. Wouldn't be a problem at all. Now, without really trying, this thing managed to do 31, 32 miles per gallon on the way here. And we were pushing it a little bit, I'll say that. And that's decent because this should do around 38, 39. And on a motorway, perhaps it would. Or if you've got it in eco and you just cruise gently, I'm, I'm sure it would be rather respectable for what is quite a powerful petrol engine. CO2 emissions, meanwhile, 154-ish, which is about the same as a Suzuki Jimny. So for a car this big and this fast, that is that is decent as well. Rear space is good too. Okay, you're gonna struggle to get someone in the middle, but two adults either side, absolutely no problem. The boots are decent size as well, fairly easy to load. It's a practical shape, so you should be able to get a variety of suitcases in for wherever it is you wanna go. 442 litres means decent space for shopping potential, although those wanting maximum practicality should go for the estate. Stylish saloon looks come at the cost of overall space, unfortunately. There's nothing about this car, in fact, that is annoying. It, it's just a car you get in, it makes you feel reasonably good, feel like you've done reasonably well at life. So it really is a good car for long distances. But at the same time, if you do want to gun it, it does come alive with a little bit of effort. It's, it's never going to blow your socks off and the, the soundtrack isn't especially great, but the steering alone is exciting enough to really get more than you would think from a Volvo. Rivals include the BMW 3 Series, Audi A4 and the Jaguar XE, all rather potent motorway cruisers in their own right and pretty handy when you want to go fast. I think these days it's really recommendable that if there is an equivalent Volvo to test that you should. I love the XC40. I'm not a huge fan of sort of SUVs in general, but if I was going to go for one, it would probably be that or if it was a crossover, say the 3008 and save a few quid because both just have a nice interior and a nice enough drive, but all the practicality as well. You're not really sacrificing much. You are getting a high quality product that ultimately will make you feel good enough. Not so much as say a Jaguar, but then I think you would trust this more than a Jag in terms of day-to-day -day reliability. As an overall package then, the new Volvo S60 really is an accomplished machine. These are not the easiest roads in terms of smoothness. Yes, they're beautiful, but also it's a place where a boring car really does feel boring because you almost wish you were in something else, but I haven't really felt that. I've been happy that this has got me from A to B because I've been comfortable. I've felt involved with the car. I've enjoyed the fact that it has got a reasonable amount of pace. There we go. Already up to, um, yeah, a certain speed. <laughs> More than I should be. Yeah, it's, it's a good car. If you haven't driven a Monday Volvo, you should because they are 
really quite impressive these days. And if you want a saloon and they are a bit of a dying breed, but they look cool then, yeah. You'd be hard pressed not to like this thing. So there you have it, the new Volvo S60. Let me know what you think about it and by all means ask me questions in the comments below. Thanks for watching, bye.